All right, we ready to do this thing? We are, yeah. yes. Okay. So, when last we left our adventurers, they had just ascended from the depths of the cogs on a uh, lift back up into the mid-ring of uh, Dura. Dura. I believe you have a comatose child and yeah. four, let's see, there are eight and three god in Shanghai, five uh, beaten warforged with you. Since we did level up in between sessions, can I say that I did develop the Tensor Floating Fist spell to bring the corpse of the person that they were worried about back up as well? Yep. Excellent. Can I point out that we both physically and metaphorically ascended while on this elevator? Because we gained a level and also went sure. up a level. Then I will mark off a spell slot. Can I... the casting of that ability. The elevator is enclosed, right? Like I can't push no yeah. off of it. Okay. Yeah, it's an uh, enclosed <laughs> lift. With this many people on it, it's actually a little bit cramped, but you'll make do. Pushing Willow off this elevator would be an incredibly rude thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you're in uh, kind of a middle class district now. Uh, once you leave the lift, pretty much. I mean, that's it. You're just standing out in the street, still pouring rain. Is this just the floor we stopped at? This is where you got on it initially, yeah. Is there a yes. contingent of the watch watching the door as we open it up? No. Looks like they've looks like they don't care anymore. Good, smart. <laughs> you guys were down there for maybe four or five hours. It's getting kind of dark at this point. Okay. Well, All right. Well, I think we should hire a couple of cabs and get these people to uh, that kid's dad's house because... Uh, Smelt, the Warforged who's done most of the talking and seems to be the most comfortable with you guys, says that they're all pretty okay to get back down on their own, and they thank you tremendously and ask if they can, you know, if they can go, and by the way, maybe don't mention any of our names if you're talking to the Watch about any of this. No, oh, certainly, and uh, and you know about the the, the, uh, the Warforged bar that we visited. I, I dropped the name okay. of that. They'll also There's take no the body off your hands for proper burial if uh, if that's something you're willing to do. You mean off our disc? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no they're welcome to take fine. the body. They know better than we do the customs that okay. they would be doing. Okay. Uh, five or four, just use uh, grab a makeshift stretcher. They have a heavy brocade uh, cloth thrown over the body to disguise it, and then they make their way out into the streets in the pouring Excellent. rain. The sun is just setting over the uh, cliffs of the Dagger Bay at this point. Just barely see it. Lots of long shadows being cast all throughout the city. So we're going to take this small child home. Yeah, let's take yep. this small child home. Okay. Let's take this small child home. Uh, just want to mark off like a silver piece for a sky coach? Or... Sure. 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 Yeah. All right. With no trouble then, you flag down a sky coach, make your way back up to the Skyway, and you head back to... What is the name of that estate? Unicorn something or other. Oh yeah, the Mithril District. And uh, Unicorn, it's Unicorn Estate. Yeah, yeah it's very simple. <laughs> what, what's the kid's name again? The child's name is, I believe, Calden. Let me double check. Merrick Oria? Yeah, Cadden. Yeah, Cadden de Oran. Uh, as soon as you approach the estate, the guards immediately run for the main building to get the child's father as they see you approaching. A second one brings a heavy uh, heavy blanket out to wrap around him and keep him out of keep him the rain off of him. And yeah. when they run up over to us and one of them goes flying off, Willow still turns to them and says Willow de Galanda here to see the master of the house. Uh, as you enter the property, the illusionary unicorn appears before each of you in bays and yeah, the uh, the guard offers to take the child in. The uh, elder Diorian and his uh, Kalashitar aide are both, at this point, running from the stairs. Out uh, into I, the, uh, I wait to courtyard. say yes to the guard until the Kalashitar gets here. Mm -hmm. Because this kid's already been abducted once. It'd be real silly to let him get abducted a second time. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, the two of them are arrived. They just basically sprint through the yard and... Uh, Alden is pretty much just beside himself. He doesn't even know what to say. Uh, Vashadi seems nonplussed, but he definitely smiles in your direction, Willow, as uh, they take the child, and they immediately say, oh, thank, thank, we don't... Come, come, come inside, have a good meal. Tell, tell us what you've discovered. Mm -hmm. 
and they bring you inside, and assuming that nobody turns them down, they'll take you into a fine dining chamber and offer you a large, well-prepared dinner. I am physically yes. incapable of turning down their hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> Love so, you. It, what are you going to discuss with them over the dinner? Like, the Alden doesn't really try and push the isu any issues on you. So anything you're going to talk about would be coming up through, that would be on your, on your, on your part to initiate the conversation, any conversation. During the dinner? None of it. It would be incredibly okay. rude to discuss business during dinner. Okay. I will drop subtle hints that dinner is nice, but perhaps a shinier reward would not go amiss. The lower classes. Uh, give me a, per, uh, just a straight charisma or, uh, do persuasion. Persuasion. To try and get that across subtly without, you know, sounding too insulting to the guy. Uh, that's gonna be a 12. Uh, as you're kind of bringing this up a couple of times across dinner, at one point you hear Vishtadi's mind in your... Vasadi's voice in your mind, and he simply says, "You will be well rewarded afterwards. Believe me." Uh, but no one makes any. No one says anything about it outwardly, uh, overtly during the meal. Does he say it ominously, though? No. <laughs> Just in his normal speaking voice in your mind. Also, so, yes. By this point, Willow, you should know yeah. Nilo is the very lowest class. Uh huh. No, I, I'm well aware. <laughs> And after dinner, uh, Alden offers that you could stay in his estate overnight if you wish uh, to rest. It looks like you've maybe, you know, and he kind of looks towards your wounds and he says, he's, looks like you've not, haven't gone uh, unharmed in your journey. Uh, he, they offer you a very nice, comfortable suite with uh, five separate rooms, a uh, central fireplace and a little kind of lobby area. And he and his son disappear. Do you want to say anything to them before that? Was the boy... Uh, because he was like he was like catatonic when we brought him up. Yeah. Is he still in that state throughout the meal, or is he doing better now? Yeah, no, he uh, he's the Goodberry actually got him at least to the point where he could walk and presumably talk, but he didn't really do any talking when you were in the Undercity. Uh, at, after he's had a good meal he seems to have perked up a bit he's still only a small child so he isn't saying much mm -hmm. but he did, uh, actually he politely says thank you and bows to you uh, before he and his father retire okay Rashadi is staying with your group as they disappear somewhere else in the uh, estate then I'm going to steal the towels and the hand soap in our beautiful suite okay I give have... me a uh, stealth check dexterity I'm pretty good at these two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a 21. Uh, there's a silver unicorn-shaped uh, oil lamp that you think would be very easy to make out without anyone noticing Yoink. your chamber. Okay. Go ahead and add that to your character sheet. It's worth uh, five gold pieces. I don't know how to add just an arbitrary item, so I'm going to search for a statue and just add whatever comes up. Okay. Where'd you steal the, uh, the silver unicorn? Oh, you know. <laughs> it could have been any estate. <laughs> uh, after the dinner, Vastati comes to your group, offers to sit down across from you on the couches in the lobby or in the you know common room of your part of the estate, and he thanks you profusely for finding the child, and offers each of you two things. First of all, he offers you a unicorn-shaped feather token. These will cast feather fall on you if you used as a reaction. Uh, they only work within the city of Sharn, though. They are attuned to Sharn's innate magical properties. Nice. And he also offers each of you uh, 20 gold pieces for returning the child. Nice. And for your I time. Take in that. lieu of any reward for me, I asked mm -hmm. him if he's in, um, if he's capable of commanding his master's forces, because I feel like we should go hire some mercenaries and put an end to this matter. <sighs> and he kind of looks, he kind of looks at you like, Master Alden would not take such a overtly political matter as to get involved in anything like this. And while we have some house guard, the idea of the House of Travel having any significant number of mercenaries is, you know, we would be hiring from House Deneth. 
Yeah. Uh, as far as Alden's concerned, there. his son is back. He's grateful to you, and he's probably going to consider you friends. Uh, you definitely could call on a favor in the future. But, uh, oh, and there was one other thing. And he kind of, he, so he's handed each of you a purse with money. He pulls out a second purse out of his cloak. If you could leave the name of House Orion out of any reports you make to the watch, and he tosses you a, uh, Nilo, he tosses you another coin per pouch. Okay. Uh, there, it's 100 gold. If you're willing to, any, do we have an agreement? If you're willing to not mention that House Orion was involved in any of this, uh, he's basically bribing you. What is... I mean, I'm interested in everybody's reaction to that question, but particularly Willow's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, can he read minds? Because Maybe he can talk to people in their minds. What other psychic powers he has? I mean, he's a character. So if he is a scion who has that ability, maybe, but you don't... Mm -hmm. Kalashitar cannot innately read your mind. They can create a mind link that allows them to have a two-way conversation. Willow is That's desperately it. trying to think of a polite way to say, I cannot believe that you are asking us to leave your name out of this rather than going to fund mercenaries after your son was stolen. What was uh, the again, his opinion is that just basically, now that they have their son back... Um, they don't care about the dig site. That job was entirely on the up and up, and if that never comes up with a watch, or at least not connected with House Orion, better for them. Yeah, Nyla's going to take twenty five gold out of the out of the pouch and then hand it over to Willow to take her share. And Willow pointedly doesn't take the pouch. Then I'll hand it over to uh, who's next in line here. Uh, oh, already's not here. Dang, that was the next uh, Melvin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And what was the original reward? I know I just uh, got 20, twenty gold for each of you. Twenty gold pieces. And the featherfall token. Cool. And the featherfall token. That's what it yep, was. Yep, it only works in Sharn. Unrelated, the second half of this adventure takes place outside of Sharn. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Melvin will absolutely take that. Okay. That Twenty-five gold offered. He was about to say something, and then he was given gold, and now he's going to close his mouth. <laughs> It's a good, uh, good, good life philosophy. It's a good way to live. <laughs> Pay me. Does Reckon Willow take the gold? Holds her hands and says, yeah, Reckon absolutely takes money. He's ha he's he's affiliated with Den. He he gets paid for his work. Yeah, w Willow folds her hands and says, "While I have no intention of informing the Watch myself, I will be informing my house of everything that happened, and I have no control over what they do." Well, as long as it doesn't end up in the press or uh, tarnishing my master's good name, that seems acceptable. And he kind of nods towards the pouch, and he you hear his voice in your mind again saying, go ahead and take it. And Willow still does not. But I okay. guess the three of us could all add eight more gold pieces? Yeah, if you want. He's not going <laughs> to take it back. Uh, he considers your business finished. He tells you you're free to stay the night. Uh, if you need anything, ring the bell, and the servants will happily provide it. And if you need him personally, just ask. And with that, he bows, and unless someone stops him, leaves the chamber. Nope. I'm, I'm very happy that Willow turned down her part of the uh, reward. So, what I find, what I find, and what I'm wondering about is where do we, where does this investigation go from here? So, what connections do we still have? We have the name of someone down in the cogs who's been grabbing people. Yeah. Is that it? I think I think that's it. Uh, Over, I think, is who it was. I've got Gwen Mage right down here. Is that who you're talking about? I think so. Gwen was uh, they was you, Gwen was someone ratted out to you by the group that tried to assassinate Cole mm -hmm. at the bar. Gwen was the one with the wand of firebolt, and she is affiliated with Dask, which is a criminal organization, but not like the cool halflings that roll terror, <laughs> uh, roll uh, tourists. Those are the good guys. Yeah, and then this Dask is the bad guys. Well, at some point, when we have some downtime, 
I have to spend one gold piece to get a bag of 1,000 ball bearings. <laughs> uh, the, the house would happily, one of the servants would happily, if you gave them a shopping list in gold, get you anything you need. Can I that's, talk them that's out of... one of the services offered to you staying here if you want to stay the night. Can I talk them out of requiring gold? And they can just... No, no they're not going <laughs> to... They've already paid you and rewarded you. But uh, if you need a shopper, uh, one of the one of the members of the house staff will happily go out to any place within... Basically any place not in the black market. Okay, well, it's... All I need is a bag of ball, uh, ball bearings. And, uh, okay, they... If you did want any house orient items, they could probably provide them at cost. What are those? Uh, magic relating to travel. Or non magic related to travel. I watched a uh, clip on YouTube of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where Charlie is like super nervous about leaving Philadelphia because he's never been out before. Mm -hmm. That's Nilo. <laughs> <laughs> Nilo is never leaving Philadelphia. All right. So yeah, you guys are free to take a long rest at the uh, Unicorn Estate or do anything else you want here. You pretty much, like, they don't confine you to your little part of the estate, so you can wander around a bit. They'll stop you if you try and head into Alden's personal chambers, but other than that, pretty much the whole place is open to you. I'm content just staying in our quarters and waiting for the shopping list to come back and eating their fine food. Yep, go ahead and buy anything you want out of the player's handbook at cost. How many servants need to get sent in order to do that? Just one. All right, then I'll tip them a silver. Okay. Because <laughs> I hey, think you can happily pocket it. She doesn't seem That's... to have any. She doesn't seem to have uh, Willow's strange qualms about accepting <laughs> generosity. Yeah, it takes about two hours to go out buy whatever you want, unless you're gonna get some, unless you're gonna get like a lot of stuff or something hard to find, like anything, any mundane equipment. They'll have probably by the middle of the night. So we still don't know like what they were excavating down there. No. Some kind of artifacts, I think. Uh, the Warforged would have been able to tell you that it was a lot of. They only did the digging once they uncovered the chamber. They weren't like they were no longer printed in there. They basically just did the uncovery, but they definitely saw that it was several large chests worth of stuff. Okay. And uh, one of them actually got a sight that it was some number of uh, runes and our books and or spell shards and or tablets like something written okay so one of two things is happening here mm -hmm. either uh captain what's her name germain uh germain yeah. vilroy germain either captain germain our task for her is done now mm -hmm. because we've sent coal to safety and the task was on the up and up. Like, it's just something that she wanted to do, but she didn't want the city watch to get too involved. Or. Right. She wants those chests. Uh, third option. And she and Willow kind of looks around the room and says she wanted us to fail. Fair point. Melvin nods at that. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I feel that the Warforged that we brought up here uh, would want us to go look for their friend, so I'm planning on going and seeking out this Hobgoblin, uh, slaying her and all of her associates and bringing the Warforged back. <laughs> uh, do I know anything about Dask? Uh, I think we rolled a history... We rolled a local last time, and you just knew the very basics. They're a crime syndicate that are mostly made up of uh, immigrants from Drome. Drome being a nation that used to be part of Breland but got sovereignty as part of the Treaty of Thronehold and pri primarily uh, made up of the monstrous non-goblinoid races. The, uh, we... the standing rumors that three, that three hags rule Drome. It's, kind of, it's not quite an open secret, but if I, that's like, you know, no one really knows the exact political structure, but the person who signed the 3D of Thronehold for Drone is generally believed to be a hag. And there are <laughs> lots of trolls and harpies and all gnolls, all the non-goblinoid monstrous races are very heavily represented. And also a lot of goblins and hobgoblins. Not so many bugbears, those are mostly in uh, 
the other nation. And it was an enemy guild or an enemy uh, clan of Dasks that had we had heard that they were funding the sergeant. Yeah, the sergeant, from what you've heard, is on the pay of the Baromers, which are the local halfling crime merchant, uh, crime family. And, and uh, uh, Baromers have been in Sharn for generations. They have members on the city council. They're very well respected. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell. Um... I'm sorry, I forget. I forget your name, bro. What's your name? Nilo. Nilo. I'll tell Nilo. Um, also, the we heard that the sergeant might be, be fu being funded by the Baromers, and I f suspect that disrupting their operations in entirety would, might be what the sergeant was looking for. Did we get a look to see if they removed all of the all of the stuff that they found down in that in that excavation tunnel? Yeah, there was nothing of value left in those ruins when you got so there. What we, so what we've done is very is very likely uh, a couple at tent. some point after the job was mostly done. At some point, the part of the job had been done. They weren't sure if they were the warforged weren't sure if they're going to be made to dig in other places or further. They weren't allowed to be released. Uh, half a dozen knolls with large chests went down there, ransacked the place at the behest of a very large woman. Uh, if anyone wants to go in and give me an intelligence check, if you make a 10 uh, from the description and from the child's description, you know they're probably a half-ogre, the woman who's running this whole operation. I think we actually got told she was a half-ogre. Yeah, I think, I'm yeah, pretty sure did. at some point someone did, but from context, if you missed that, like, yeah. You, yeah. you'll be together talking to all the descriptions from people you've gotten at this point. Yeah, because I accidentally rolled two dice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I think Alden, yeah, Alden's actually even had direct dealings with her, because she's the one who made him finance this this dig. Right. She's the one that kidnapped his son. Yep. Yep. And honestly, I don't think his father is the best caretaker of his son, or knows what's in his best interest. And I feel like we should take out this half ogre so she doesn't just come back and take take him back. Do we know anything about her whereabouts? Uh, no. You've talked to people that have seen her, but no one actually knows. None of the people you've talked to have given you her a location from where she is. They've all uh, kind of been hired through intermediaries or in in play. They, no, no one's ever gone to like her hideout to get orders that you've dealt with so far. Okay. Okay. We're on a time crunch. Like we don't have a particular time limit, do we? No. Yeah, but I mean, the longer that these people have to, to, you know, continue to, you know, mis misuse people to to steal these artifacts is that's not good either. No, that's not my problem. I'm just looking to get paid at the end. Uh, okay, so I have my background feature invisible outcasts mm -hmm. i could spend a week begging as a downtime action yeah and i become privy to a secret that someone should not have revealed around witnesses mm -hmm. because people tune out the existence of beggars okay so if we have a week i would be more than happy to do that to learn uh something about this half ogre's whereabouts that strikes me as something that, as long as the rest of us don't get too incautious, you can accomplish while the rest of us go after a second uh, point. Sure. Certainly. Because we have this writ from the watch. We have a week. I think we can get some information with it. <laughs> worst comes to worst, we'll just go back down to the cogs and start ambushing lone people until we find one that can bring us where we should need to go stacking up goblins <laughs> yeah just start stacking up goblins until one of them knows the right answer <laughs> see i'll get started on that so you're not staying here overnight i am well, I thought so we anyone, anyone who wants to stay on the location can take a long rest here basically well, I, was yeah, take the long I, I think you can probably then, start that in the morning right yeah Nyla? start that tomorrow yeah. Okay. Anyone who takes a long rest at the estate can attune to the estate's inherent magic. What that does is while you're on the estate, you will be immune to enchantment spells of third level or lower, and you will not have the illusionary horse appear and bay um, as you enter. Wild. 
That, uh, that then strikes me as an answer to how that kid got nabbed. Somebody came yeah, in as a that... guest and had the magic uh, dispelled, and then... Very potentially. Like, how long does the attunement last? It's an, it's like an attuned item, until you attune to another item, or during a long rest decide to end it. Huh. Or we leave the yeah. estate. It only works on the estate, like, you'd still be attuned, so you can step off the estate, the effect is still attuned, but it doesn't do anything until you go back onto it. So you, you won't keep the mind, the enchantment immunity if you leave the estate, but you also, when you come back onto it, you the horse won't bay and the enchantment immunity will kick right back in. It only works on the premises. So, all right. That, yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that's suspicious as well. I mean, I know Willow doesn't want to hear this, but this does mean that the abductor was probably a guest of the house yeah definitely and willow nods and she seems very grieved by this <laughs> it's the worst okay. thing she's ever heard Other than that, you have a long rest you can choose to attune or not oh I bet i'll attune to it just because i don't want sure. the horse to yell at me when i go to leave yeah i'll attune yeah. to it it'd be rude not to okay just go ahead and put it in one of your uh... Magic item attunement slots. Attuned to house. And yeah, the next day, they the servants bring you a breakfast before you're even up. Uh, just as the first lights are starting to appear over the clouds, it's still raining. There is some, uh, there's still some sunlight. There's some breaks in the clouds off on the east that allow sunlight in just probably only for a few hours in the morning from the looks of things th with this weather. It's not pouring anymore. It's just more of a drizzle. So I'm going to get okay. started on my background action. Yeah, okay. And if you guys find better leads while I'm working on that, you can just interrupt me and I will... Yeah, just let that. us know where you're bagging. We'll find you. So as a, as the group is leaving the estate, is anyone else... Are you guys staying or is Milo leaving alone or what? Um, no, I'll be leaving. I'm, yeah, I'm, I think we're all yeah, leaving we're the estate, but I'm okay. going off on my own. Uh, as you leave the estate, a uh, familiar voice comes across from a dizzying height as a sky coach pulls up along one of the bridges aside it. Need a lift, and Sergeant Vilroy is piloting this coach. No, oh, I think I found a better lead. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, not in Fager as I head in. Sergeant. Okay. And she brings the coach down to the bridge. Hop in. Hop on in. And then she says, all right, uh, well, um, right, yeah, so, we're, we're going down to Terminus, right? I'm sorry? We Terminus? Are. That's, that's where we're headed? What is Terminus? Terminus is the lightning rail, um, station at, uh, the entrance to Sharn. Oh. Why? Well, she kind of looks at you expectantly. Yeah, why would that be? That's where... Oh, uh... That, that's... I mean, that's where our investigation is taking us, isn't it? And at that, the coach leaps into the air and starts ascending through the towers. I hadn't... been... Nothing, nothing there suggested that we go there, but... What, what do you know that we don't? Uh, isn't that... Oh, no, that's where the, the woman you're tracking is down there, isn't it? I mean, I'm, look, I'm a member of the Watch. It's my job to, to know things. Hmm. Our... Are... Are you highly encouraged... I'm going to hit her for one up? point of damage. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need an initiative and an attack roll for that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think she's being charmed. <laughs> Oof, that's not a good initiative roll. She's gonna, she's gonna see this coming. Uh, did you beat a six? No. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I recon beat a, beat a, beat a, beat a six though. But he's not. He's, he's, he's kind of slow in the uptake as well. Uh, actually, go ahead and give me everyone else in the coach. Give me an active insight roll. When you say everyone else, do you mean not me? Yep. Okay. Four. 
Oh wow, that is a uh, twenty. That's higher than four. That is a <laughs> seventeen. All right, Rakan and Melvin, uh, you've been around Willow enough at this point. You realize her intention to strike the sergeant, uh, and are not surprised. So go ahead and roll initiative and put yourselves on the order. Okay, well, I already have. Actually, that was technically an eighteen. I already forgot about. <laughs> nice, welcome, welcome down here. Hell yeah! That is a that Glad actually keeps me at zero. I'm at four. I just realized. <laughs> so it looks like Rakan actually realizes that uh, Willow is about to strike the surgeon and gets a chance to act before that. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm not going to attack yet, but I am going to cast Mage Armor. Sure. Got you 14. Uh, Jermaine Vilroy throws open the door to the Sky Coach and jumps out. What? Before and Willow just yeah. like sits there once again, like that is not where I expected this going. Can I? <laughs> like, Can okay, I so a... we're we're flying in a sky coach, like it's flying. Yeah, and you're in the skyway. You're all the way at the top of Sharn. So this is a suicide jump. Well, yeah, I look out, I... The, out over the edge. Is she? Uh huh. She's falling. Okay. So so we are on initiative because I have a reaction. Yeah, you yeah you can take a. When you can a try creature, when a creature within uh, that uh, one reaction, would you take when you or a creature within sixty feet of you falls? Uh -huh. uh, I think that trigger has been fixed. So I, I'm casting Featherfall <laughs> on on her and the rest of my on her myself and uh, the rest of my allies. How long does Featherfall last? If your allies one aren't minute. falling, okay, excellent. Okay, yeah, she uh, just barely at the bottom, maybe forty or fifty feet away. You speak the word of power. And uh, magic whirls up all around you, and you suddenly feel unnaturally buoyant, and you see your fall arrested quite a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna. Once it's my turn, I'm going to be dropping down after her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So that was a reaction to her action. Willow, you're up. Yeah, and I, I I'm gonna say I think Willow, you've been charmed. Roll your initiative. Oh, you said everybody but me because I didn't. Yeah, you weren't aware that this was about to break out, but like, so you'll be surprised this round. But next round, <laughs> yeah. What? You, I'm sorry. What were you doing, Willow? Oh, uh, Willow turns the others and says, "I think she's been charmed." And Willow jumps out after. Her. Okay, and now you're descending 60 feet uh, per round, and she's about 40 feet ahead of you. So let me go ahead and make another copy of this token. <laughs> There's a duplicate clone. Beautiful. All right, so this is a vertical battle mat now. So we have Willow here. We have Philroy there. And we have the other three in the sky coach, 60 feet above you. Uh, do you want to do anything out? Because that's just using your movement to jump out of the sky coach. Um, that's a good point. Give me one second. Yep. <laughs> I use dash to dash through the air. No, you're falling. Yeah. You won't, you can move for you can kind of use your remaining movement to kind of like try and glide to some degree from the air resistance. Uh, that would be an acrobatics check uh, and then consume movement. But you're not going to have any ability to control how fast you're falling. Just kind of the direction to some very limited degree. Um. You've just left the skyway, so you're now, like, there are no towers parallel to you. You're actually falling directly into the center of the city. That sounds like something that's going to lead to us being very, like, in a real dangerous way. Uh-huh. So, uh, before we before we all jump out of this thing, assuming the others are going to as well, I'm also going to bless all of them. <laughs> sure. Or, no, there's four of us, and bless only targets three people. I'm going to bless everyone but me. Okay. Uh, I believe you don't have a bonus action, so we're on Melvin. Nope, I'm good. So I have feather fall on me, right? Yep, you yeah. feel unnaturally buoyant. Okay. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. Mm -hmm. What happens to a charmed person when you try to charm them? Give me an arcana check. 
Are you gonna are you stopping to think about this or is this just what you know? Like do you wanna use your action to try and work out the very specifics of the magic or you're just kinda off the top of your head? Which do you want? I'm gonna jump out and think about it. Okay, give your, use your action to make an uh, to make an arcana check. And uh, if you want, you can also make an acrobatics to control the direction you're falling, but not the distance or speed. Uh, okay, cool. So this is Arcana. Bless adds a d4. Right? Uh, one second. It's, yeah, it's a d4, but I'm not sure it applies to this. I know it applies it's to a... saving throws. I think it's attacks and saves, but I'm not it's sure. Attacks and saves. Yeah, it's attacks and saves. It's funny, because I use this spell all the time, and now I don't remember. <laughs> uh... You're blessed! <laughs> that is a 11. And uh, so you're wondering what happened if multiple charm effects were on the same person? Yep. Uh, they would try and obey all... The best you can think is they would try and obey orders that... Were, if you gave someone an order of charmed when they had another charm, they would try and obey orders in such a way that they conflicted with neither. If they were given completely contradictory orders, probably one of the two charms would break. Rad. Do you have anything else? Right. A bonus action or anything? Uh, I got it. So, and you wanted a, you wanted a, yeah, what was it? If you want to control the direction you're falling, you can make an acrobatics to try and like shimmy through the air, like to allow, use air resistance to move in a direction. But you'd have to, you know, pick a direction you're moving. Like, do you want to move towards the closest tower? Right now, you're kind uh, of in the, you're literally in the middle of nowhere because you guys were just, just left the skyway. No, Melvin is too excited. So, <laughs> what he's going to do. Instead, is start playing his loot on the way down. Okay. As hard as he can, and give Bardic inspiration to who's next to me, Willow. Excellent. Uh, you were surprised in the initial round, Nilo, so now you're free to act. So I'm sitting alone? No. <laughs> uh, coach. Rakan's over, he's looking about ready to jump out as well. Uh, Nilo, you uh, coach? it might be possible to take control of the Sky Coach if you have uh, piloting, especially as one of your proficiencies. I don't but I'm pretty smart. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. <laughs> Sol soldier, soldier background gives land proficiency, land vehicle proficiency. He's not sky. Yeah, if vehicle. anyone who grew up in Sharn, I'll happily let you trade that for aerial vehicle proficiency. But Khan didn't. Otherwise, yeah, you'll just have the land vehicle. So yeah, it'll be intelligence and intelligence vehicle. Profic intelligence aerial vehicle proficiency to get control of this coach. Or you can just jump out. It seems to work for everyone else. I'm definitely going to try to fly the coach. Okay. Give me an intelligence uh, aerial vehicle proficiency. I do not have aerial vehicle proficiency. Okay. Raw straight into, into that. <laughs> Crushed it. Alright. 15. You get control of it. Nice. You managed to, uh, it's been kind of starting to list to one side since she stopped controlling it, you walk over to the controls, uh, grab the reins, even though they don't connect to a horse or anything, and just kind of pull them in one direction, pulling back a bit, and you kind of manage to arrest it, moving up a bit. So this this coach can move at up to 80 feet. It takes your uh, action to steer it or change its direction, mm -hmm. and uh, you can use your movement to, you can use your bonus action to make it dash, effectively. Do I know how to land it? Uh, yeah, you could probably land it. You might... We'll say that since you have control of it at this point, you'll be able to land it, but it might take an action to do that because it's going to be you're going to need to actually make small adjustments to your speed as you're coming in. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll start gently. I'll start pulling it around so I'm heading in the direction that all of my companions will be landing upon. Okay. Uh, do you want to try and overtake them? The coach is faster than they're falling. No, I don't think so because I don't know what's going to happen down there. Let and me drop I've... something into the scene. Do you want... So that's going to be your action to control the coach. Sure. Uh, you still have a bonus action if you want to do anything else. Dodge. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and dodge. You know what? So, okay, here's my thought. I don't know if I need to land this thing or if there's going to be something interesting to crash it into. So I want to keep my options open. Yeah, smart. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just going to dodge here. Give me one second. You might want to scale that brick up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yep. 
All right, so you are just kind of holding course with your allies, following them? And you haven't gotten any closer, right? You're still about 60 feet away? That's fine. Yep. All right. Uh, that was your full turn then. So we're on Rakan. Rakan's going to jump out, following after the others. All right, that's um... your movement. Uh, if you want to make an acrobatics, you can steer your fall. Do you want to do a bonus or a standard action? Uh, do I have training in acrobatics? I surely don't. But I will, yeah, I'm going to do that to d try and direct myself to follow where uh, where, the, where, the, where the sergeant is follow falling. But right now, all of you are falling down straight. So you don't have to, that'll be like a DC 5 not to just not fall off course. Okay, well, then I absolutely make that. Okay. And the sergeant, let's see here. So, sergeant, how far away are you? She, she fell 80 feet and then got slowed. She's got another 60 feet of falling. All right, so the sergeant pulls a dagger out of somewhere in her cloak that you don't, you can't really tell where she's pulling this out of at this speed, falling, and whips it up at Willow. <laughs> that seems uncalled for. Betrayal. That's going to hit a AC of 16. That's a hit. You should have dodged. Damn. I've got dice here. You take uh, four damage from the dagger as it whirls up at you. You basically kind of fall into it. And then uh, it falls away into the city below you. And the That's sergeant dangerous. continues to fall. She uh, kind of, let's see here, she kind of jinx a little bit and begins not actually making any horizontal motion. She's unable to really get good control of her fall. Uh, Willow, you're up. Sergeant Vilroy, under your own authority, I'm taking you in. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I don't have anything that's not lethal. And I don't super want to kill her. So, so you're going to fall uh, 60 feet. You can take your action before or after that. Yeah. Uh, how much farther do we have to fall? Uh, <laughs> you guys were right in the middle of the city and it just left the skyway when she jumped out. Uh, you probably got 400 feet of falling before you. You'll make, you'll, you see a tower coming up the very top of one. Uh, it's got a really nice garden on it. It seems like it's probably an upper class area in the top district in one of the middle districts. But you're probably like, she'll, she'll get there before you, assuming she doesn't try and fall somewhere else. And uh, it'll probably be about halfway into the duration of this feather fall. You'll, you've been around enough to know how long a feather fall lasts. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna eat a nice good berry. Okay. My action. <laughs> I'm gonna hope I'm, I can out dagger her. <laughs> do you want to uh, do anything else? No, I got nothing to do. Elvin, you're up. We got uh, Milo on deck. Uh, all right, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, keep moving. And man, I don't know if Melvin has it in him to viciously mock, vicious, viciously <laughs> mock her. Well, she's about what is it? She's about eighty feet away. She's got a little bit more than one round of feather fall of the lead on you. Oh, she's really far, huh? Yep. Now let me like that. More like that. Like just a little bit further out. Uh yeah, that's out of the range of Vicious Mockery anyway. Yeah. Alright. Uh <laughs> gonna do some loot dodging. Okay. <laughs> that is the dodge action while playing a loot. Nilo or uh, Melvin is Melvin <laughs> is really into falling and playing music. He thinks this is metal as hell. Nala, you're up. For Con, you're on deck. So, I could try to catch people in back in the air cab. Yeah, it's fast and they're falling. So, there's a chance she might land on the roof of this tower, but it looks like she's or not. Or she try and fly around it and keep falling for a while. I'm going to stay above everyone. Do you want to do anything else with your actions? Just dodge. Rakan, you're up. Take your action before or after you fall. 
After I fall, and I'm going to fire a firebolt at her. That's in range. Maybe knocking some sense into her will do do something. That's a 14 to hit. That it's. Oh, wait, I'm blessed. Oh, yeah, I'm also blessed. You're blessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Still hit. D10. It actually misses now. Weird. Oh, weird. With the blast. <laughs> Seven fire damage to her chest. She lets out a yell as the bolt just strikes right in the center of her chest. She's looking up at you with the air rushing past. Sergeant, come to your senses. Uh, do you have anything else to do on your turn? That's it. She whips another dagger out of somewhere on her person and throws it at Rakan. She has so nope. many daggers. And that dagger also disappears, and she falls another 60 feet. <laughs> and again, tries to move horizontally with the air, but doesn't seem to make any... Uh, what I'm actually going to do is... Just gonna... So she's not on track to land on the garden on the top of the tower. At the she's going to land on the garden. She keeps trying to like pivot and change the way she's falling, so she dodges it, but she keeps failing. She like keeps tumbling back into a neutral falling position. Okay. Uh, that's the end of her turn. We got Willow with Melvin on deck. Willow sees her whip a dagger out after being hit by a fireball and shouts out to the others. She's not charmed. Something else is going on. Sergeant, I don't have any less than lethal options, so I'm just going to start shooting fireballs at you until you stop. <laughs> Is it considered polite to tell your opponent what you're going to do to them before you do yeah. it? Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just letting them know, like... I don't have anything I can do to you that isn't lethal, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's a... Uh... Crap, one second. I have to actually do the math here. That's a 15 to hit. That hits. Go ahead and give me damage. Four fire now. All right. Yeah, you uh, speak an incantation. A bolt of flame leaps from your finger and strikes the sergeant right in the shoulder. Do you want to do anything about how you're falling? Uh, I I'm already following her, right? Yeah. And she's, yeah. un she's been un unsuccessfully trying to change the direction she's falling, but every time she tries, the air just tumblers her back. She's basically falling with her back to the ground, and every time she tries to lean in another direction, she tumbles around and remains in that position, falling yeah, straight until, down. Until guard. she actually succeeds, I'm going to keep mm -hmm. on her. All right. Uh, after Willow, we've got Melvin with Nilo on deck. <laughs> you know what this... <laughs> you know what this needs? This needs an awesome light show to go along with the awesome music. Yes. So Melvin That's what we've is been trying to... to do with the pyrotech. Melvin is going to cast da dancing lights. Okay. It allows me to. Whoops. It allows me to create four torch-sized lights within a 120 foot range. Mm -hmm. So she's in range. Yeah. Yeah. One for Jermaine, one for Willow, one for Melvin, and one for Rakan. To those like a, a, as a bonus a action, okay. as a bonus action, I can move them sixty feet, mm -hmm. and it is, it is a Melvin's plan to move the lights with the people as he's okay. Out. Uh, go ahead and take your bonus action for this round to keep them with the falling because people are currently in the middle of falling. So yeah. go ahead and take your action and your bonus action to do that. And yeah, you let out a power cord. A burst of light just flies off of your loot and illuminates each of your allies yeah. and the sergeant. So now uh, everyone can see this hurt. awesome thing happening. <laughs> I don't have anything that'll be helpful other than healing. Okay. So it's like, Nylon, you're up. We got uh, Ron on deck. Just... <sighs> would I be able to... I, I could overtake Jermaine if I wanted to. Uh, yeah, it would take your your entire turn to catch up to her, and then next turn you'll be in line with her. Like You'll take your action this turn to get into being uh, basically where she is, and then next turn you'd be able to take another action and still keep up with her. And at that position, I'm still above the top of this tower? Like yeah, but I getting closer rapidly, probably another 15-20 seconds at the rate their feather falling. Okay. Two or three rounds. Let's do that with the... with anticipating scooping them all back up in the sky cab. Alright. The sky cab. 
flies down, sailing past your companions at a high speed. Actually, you pointing. said I, I can dash to make it move further, right? Uh, yeah, you can move. You can spend your dash to move further. Can I also? How, where do you want it to be, basically? If I can scoop her up this turn, I'll do it. If so I you can... want to get under her so she falls into the entrance to the sky cab? That would be okay. All right. So uh, the sky cab, the doors in the sky cab are on the side, so it's going to be horizontal while you're doing that. And for a uh, maneuver that precise, I'm going to require another <laughs> intelligence uh, aerial vehicle check. You'll be able to get in the rough position, what? but whether she bounces off the side or is whatnot, it's going to be up to how well you do this. And I'm going to do the maneuver run. so perfectly, she's going to fall yep. straight through the bitch. Watch. I'm giving her a uh, opposed acrobatics as a reaction as she's trying to avoid this. <laughs> That's a 12. Uh, she got a 14, so you yeah you sky, you bring the cart down, you go directly under her, and she deftly spreads her legs out, kicks off the door, and vaults out, like kind of does a somersault and continues falling behind it. What, what is this? What is her problem? Uh, that's right. your entire turn. Now next turn you'll be able to, if you want to keep pace with her, you will get an action. Well, that was, that was my movement and an action, correct? Yeah, yeah. Because I can yep. bonus action dash as well. Yeah, you do have a bonus action right now. Okay, then do that to stay underneath her. Uh, No, because she already jumped off the edge of it. Like, she landed and then kept falling, and that's kind of going to be where the, the movement ends. Okay. So she's just barely underneath you right now, and they're so basically you're gonna have to you're gonna have to keep coaching. You're gonna have to, unlike everyone else, the sky coach is not falling on its own; it's being piloted. So you're gonna have to continually move it, basically. Fair enough. Then I'm gonna bonus. Uh, uh, I can't bonus up. action dodge. Okay. Um, and we're gone. You can take your action before or after falling. I want to hold. I want to hold another first level spell slot because I don't. I don't. I don't know if anything's gonna happen. I'm just going to ready my action to change course if she's able to change course. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, with the sky coach having almost scooped her up, but she managed to just barely avoid the door. She uh, pulls another dagger out, and I'm gonna give you half color cover here, Nilo. As she whips it inside. Man, this shit ain't funny. Don't forget Nyla okay. dodged. With the, oh, you you dodged, right? No, I can't. I, can't oh, I thought you bonus action thing. dodged. My can't. Bad. Sorry. I'm a like, rogue, not a monk. Uh, that's going to hit an armor class of 13 with the cover, so it just barely glances off the inside of the sky coach and misses you. Yeah, not going to do it. And then she falls another 60 feet. She's getting pretty close to that garden right now. Let's see if she can steer her way any, in any other direction. Oh, she's, uh, yeah, she's managed to kind of, like, finally get the her falling to cooperate, and now she's probably just barely going to miss the edge of this garden and probably keep falling towards the lower bridge. I'm going to react. And and yeah, you've got your reaction. Thing. Go ahead and give me an acrobatics, DC 10. Uh, pass. I need to step All away right. for two and seconds. I'll be right back. Yeah, as she's doing that, Rakan arrest, changes the direction he's falling as well, sailing towards her. Uh, let's see. Willow's up with Melvin on deck. So, I was falling exactly in the direction she was, and she uh -huh. hit the cab. Am I about to hit the cab? <laughs> no, you know, it's there's a lot of space. Uh, the 3D space is very large, and the cab is quite small. Unless you make an effort to it, you're not going to hit the cab. Okay. Now, if you want to hit the cab, you can make a very easy acrobatics check to land on it. I'm wondering if it would be an easier acrobatics check to land on that than to try to change my movement like she's been doing. Uh, probably. It's closer, at least. Yeah, I might try to just land on the cab and then jump off it after. I think that's yep. easier. Go for it. Give me an acrobatics as part of your movement. Right. Boom. That's fine. I have a plus... What do I have? A plus three? Eight? That's it. That's the DC I set for it. All right. You land on the side of the cab, just barely avoiding putting your foot through one of the glass windows. And I land on the side of the cab and I say... Thank you, Manilo. Your assistance is appreciated. So that's your movement. You still have an action. Yeah, and I use my action to <laughs> push back off the cab in her direction. Don't thank <laughs> me yet. Uh, give me an acrobatics, and we'll see how close you get. Do you want to okay. try and jump downward? Yeah, I want to try to like. I want to get as close to okay, her as I can. Cab to kick off of. You might be able to get a little bit more. Uh, even though you're still generally falling at a fixed rate, you might be able to get a little bit more 
uh, move. distance on her, especially since you're taking your action. That's an acrobatic, by the way. 17. Or 17. Yeah, you get about 10 feet of extra movement by just... You, you land on the cab. You just barely avoid putting your foot through one of the windows. You skimmy around to the underside of it and kick off of it. Afterwards, you continue falling at 60 feet, but that little push got you probably within about 50 feet of her. Nice. Uh, that was the end of Willow's turn, so we got Melvin with Nilo on deck. 